Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show. But I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. We'll be right back to the show. But before we do, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Factor Mills. Dot com, where if you go to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50, you can get 50% off your first order. That's factormills.com slash unbroken50. If you're like me and you are a person who is busy trying to create a life, heal, work on their health, wealth, and relationships, and not to mention deal with the day-to-days of normal life, you do not have time to be going to the grocery store and trying to figure out what you're going to cook every single day of the week. In fact, one time I did the math and I realized I was spending over 15 hours a week at the grocery store and cooking. When I added factor, I got to use that time for myself, for my family, for my friends, for my community, and for my business. And so if you're in the place where you need some more support in the kitchen, head to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50 to get 50% off. Do you ever feel like life is a never-ending series of lessons while you try to find purpose, meaning, and answers? I am Vanessa Fontana, the host of Figuring Shit Out, a podcast where we undertake self-help, coming of age, and healing. As I live my 20s in New York City figuring shit out myself, I've realized that if you spend your whole life trying to get your act together, you don't have a life. You have an act. On Figuring Shit Out, every Sunday you get to normalize the journey of not knowing and be guided into living your life with more intention and ease. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. 
and I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. Yo, what's up, Unbroken Nation? Hope that you're good wherever you are in the world, my friends. Today, coming to you again with the Michael Unbroken podcast. My goal and company is to help you understand your life, get out of the vortex, and ultimately become the hero of your own story. And today, I'm thrilled to bring our guest, Daniel Mangina, on, who we are going to talk about and dive into some stuff, spiritual, holistic, and incredible. Daniel, my friend, how are you? What is going on in your world? I'm fun, fun, bloody tastic. How are you doing? I'm so good. I'm, I'm super <laughs> stoked to be here with you. You and I resonate in, in a lot of different areas. And, and looking at and researching and understanding what you do, I think often like, man, this is such a piece of the puzzle that you're talking about, which I discuss in trauma healing, but just from a different aspect. And I think that there's something potent and powerful about what it is that you do. For those who have no idea who you are, or maybe have a little bit of an inkling, talk to me, Daniel, about what it is that you do and, and how you exist in the universe. Well, thank you again for having me on. I'm really, really really grateful to have this opportunity to connect with people. I have the opportunity to daily wake up and support people accessing all of who they are. And it's one of those cliches, I think, that's often thrown about, oh, you know, access all of who you are and blah, blah, blah. But generally speaking, people that talk about accessing all of who you are invite you to do it through just one medium. Access all, through, through, access all, who, all of who you are through this new meditation or through this mindset practice or through this new strategy whereas i get that i love to bring people into complete and entire alignment with all of their being so that's mental emotionally and energetic and physical too and by doing so live more abundant joyful purpose driven lives yeah i love that that's beautiful and I, and I think it's so potent and important because so often we get lost and distracted by things that in reality actually don't matter mm -hmm. i want to dive into this but first Take me back. Where did this journey start for you? You know, I, I would say that my life is a bit of a trilogy, right? So I've got phase one, uh, you know, child of Zimbabwean immigrants, born and raised in East London in the UK. Everything's good and lovely. Went ahead and uh, built a, a million pound business with some friends by the age of 20 years old. Promptly lost everything by the age of by the age of 20 years old, everything was made and lost in a long period of time, in a short period of time. And then I had this next chapter where I was like, I was, I was unbroken. I was like, oh, okay. I was undeterred. I was still young, you know, still had the naivety. And I went and built another multi-million pound fortune and then lost it again. And that time I was actually broken. This is the crazy thing though. The only reason why I didn't kill myself was because I didn't want to fail at something else. And I didn't have a means where I could definitely feel confident in the fact that I was going to commit suicide. If I had a gun, I don't know if I'd be here right now. Ultimately, I said to myself, I see people with cut wrists. I wasn't interested in that. I didn't want someone to find me and bring me down and cut me down. I, I didn't want to wake up in the morning in the hospital with my stomach pump. I needed a very sure way of executing this. And what ended up happening was I then went through, I'd say about an eight or nine year period that evolved, but initially started off with me understanding what had gone wrong with my method of manifesting what I wanted in my life. Not so that I could go back to manifesting good stuff, but so that I could successfully commit suicide. That evolved over time into understanding that everything that I was trying to run away from through suicide had actually actually had the potential to not be the end of my story. So I found light by accidentally overanalyzing myself out of suicide and stumbling upon what I now teach around the world beyond intention, which is understanding that I'm the author and creator of my life. No outcome is forever. All outcomes are available to me if I simply step into alignment with it. And that became my journey for a while. And then for the last four years now, I've dedicated my life pretty much full time to sharing that message with people. And that's the, that's the, the episode in the trilogy that we're in right now. 
We'll be right back to today's show. But first, I need to ask you a question. Are you feeling stuck? Are you feeling like you don't have the support to go to the next level in your healing journey? Are you feeling like you wish you had a little bit more support from not only myself, but the Unbroken Nation? Well, my friend, I want to invite you to come and join our live weekly coaching sessions in Think Unbroken. All you have to do is go to keys, K-E-Y-S, keys.thinkunbroken.com to sign up and join us today with 100% money back, no questions asked, guaranteed and no contract or commitment every week for the next year. You can come and be a part of our live coaching sessions each Monday as we dive deep into not only answering your questions, but questions from the unbroken nation and help you take all of the information that you learn in the podcast, in the courses and other areas of this journey, bring them into your life and use it in a way that is practical, life-changing and transformative. So my friend, join us at keys.thinkunbroken.com and we will see you this Monday. Yeah, that's powerful, man. I get that. I resonate at at 26 after very much in mind doing what you did, finding a ton of success, very young, making six figures at 20 years old, having wow. cool cars and clothes and like doing really well while coming from poverty, being homeless mm-hmm. as a child, having this moment at, at 26 and looking at this reflection of my life as pure disaster and and attempting suicide and thinking about like, this is my out because I don't want to deal with it anymore. Mm-hmm. I I think about this often, right? And there are so many people listening to this who have been in that position or might be in that position right now where it's like, life is so fucking hard. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired of failing. I'm tired of being let down. I'm tired of mm. all of the things, right? And, and I think about that moment, right? Because I resonate with this in such an intrinsic way. I think about that moment in which I had made a decision to do something different. Mm-hmm. And that being, how do I step into living my life? How do I challenge myself? How do I take this rock bottom moment, flip it on its head and go, I'm tired of my own bullshit. So let me figure it out. Mm-hmm. What was that moment like for you? Because there is this thing that happens, I believe, and I'm curious if this was your experience in which something switches and that being you've made a decision. Do you know what's really powerful, right? Is that, and since then it's, it's helped me to understand this differentiation between unconscious choices and conscious choices. Because a big part of what I share with people is that ultimately every outcome that we experience is the result of a choice that was met with alignment, alignment in what we're feeling, what we're thinking, and what we're doing, everything. But 97% of the time, those choices are being made unconsciously. So we're running on autopilot about those choices. I accidentally stumbled into the choice to choose life. I didn't do it deliberately. I was so busy focusing on getting manifestation right so that I could choose death that I didn't notice the evidence pining up in the background that basically said, but that's BS, Dan. You don't need to end it here because you're saying that you want to go because you're basically just a burden on everyone. You're saying that you want to go because you've got nothing left to contribute, but there's so much fucking more for you to give to the world. And you're here unpacking it and discovering it now. And it actually happened, I think it was when I was going through um, The Power of Now, which is a book that I read on that that particular part of the journey, when I was like, oh, got the past, we've got the future, we've got now, that's all memories. And all of those memories are malleable. When I started going into the power of the mind and our ability to change the emotional resonance of memories, all of that stuff that I'm using as the basis to to delete my future isn't even freaking real anymore. And that's when it happened for me is that I'm running away from an illusion and cutting myself off from the possibility to create something beautiful going. And it was completely accidental. Yeah. And, and that's, that's so interesting to me, but, but there was also the moment that you recognize it. Right. And I want to talk about this moment because I think it's important because often I say this about many things in life, the mm-hmm. signs are there. It's mm-hmm. there. That thing that you've wanted, that thing you're longing for, the thing you desire, it's there, but you're mm-hmm. not open to it because you've already made a decision that you can't have it, right? Mm-hmm. What was this moment like for you where you made, now, now there's a choice being made, right, mm-hmm. Dan, where you go, okay, oh, I have this new understanding. I'm going to move towards it in this way as mm-hmm. opposed to what I was doing. What was that like to develop that understanding within yourself? For me, it was, it was just a shift in the intention. Because I was still intentional in going down into the shadows, but we just shifted that intention to, oh, 
well, I'm still going to continue this journey of learning. I'm still going to continue this journey of being deliberate. Still going to continue this journey of creating. And the great thing was, is that I saw that it wasn't big shifts in what had gone wrong before. It was a simple matter of, for example, gratitude moving beforehand, understanding that I'm human and that I'm fallible and I'm going to make mistakes. And there were some tears, but mostly it was really just coming to love myself enough to let myself get away with the shortfalls of myself and being human. And that's what it really was. It was really about coming back to self and loving myself enough to be okay with the fact that, yeah, I've made some mistakes. Yeah, it hadn't all been rosy and lovely, but I get to have another chance. Yeah, I, I think about this often, this place in which shame and guilt and self-sabotage exist. I know that's a part of it for you. I'm going to mm -hmm. name it, even though you're not, because I, I recognize <laughs> oh, Shame is insidious and definitely a part of it. What is that journey like, right? From, from this place in which it's something that consumes you to which mm -hmm. something that you understand and move through, because I, I recognize shame, man, it consumes everything when mm -hmm. it has hold of you. So the first step in my model beyond intention is accept. And accept really is about stepping into the fullness of are knowing that we're the author and creator of our life. And I'm one of the reasons why I really love the work that people are doing out in the world with shame. One of my friends, Anne Hastings, has got a great book on it. It's because shame is one of those insidious things that robs us of the ability to step into it because we're giving our power away to these illusionary shadows. For me, it was recognizing that, I don't know if you've ever seen the meme, there's this meme. Um, so like, Lord, save me from my haters. And then there's God saying, dude, nobody's thinking about you. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen that word, but it's like, that really hit home for me because there's an aspect of self-importance. And I, I don't want to crap on anyone listening in, in on this, but there's an aspect of like an elevated self-importance that comes from the idea of shame. Other people care about me so much that I'm actually going to take their opinions that often aren't even voiced project them onto myself, beat myself down on the back of that and don't allow myself to love myself as a result. Yeah. And loving myself. I mean, I love that. I love that. I love that love. It's been scientifically demonstrated that the, the actual ex experience of love changes the brain frequencies to be more coherent. And when we look at the science of coherence and incoherence, when you introduce a, co a coherent frequency into an e incoherent space, it has to change. It's been scientifically demonstrated. So learning to love myself when I had the awareness of what I was allowing shame to do to me actually did a lot of the heavy lifting of transmuting that space of shame and guilt and give me the breathing space to make that new choice of life. Yeah. And that's powerful, man, because I, I, it is, it's so much about tapping into it and recognizing. It. And, and I'll say this, and I've shared this with my listeners and even in my book many times, my superpowers, I don't give a fuck what people think about me, but, <laughs> but I had to develop that as a skill because mm -hmm. it used to be, I only cared about what people thought about me. Thus insert me being in this place. I call the vortex where you're stuck and it's negative self-talk and all of these things. Mm -hmm. How much, how much of working through shame is, is adjusting the way that you're speaking to yourself? How we speak to us. I, I like to say that words are just a medium that carries the energy. Like I can say, I freaking hate you, man. Like you don't feel the hate because there's not an energy of hate. It doesn't matter what words I'm saying, right? The words aren't where the power is. The, the energy that's behind that is what's important. So when I'm talking to myself and I, I'm, I'm, I want to go back to when do people do positive self-talk, unless there's a coherent truth of love in the words I'm saying to myself, then it doesn't matter what the words are. What ends up happening is when people allow themselves to fall into this unconscious pattern of self-doubt, these unconscious patterns of being in their vortex and allowing all this, the energy, even when they're not speaking to themselves, creates this resonance that even blocks them from stepping into new choices about what they say. But when we bring an energy of love to ourselves, even before we have the words to say, we may still feel, I'm too short, I'm too tall, but I'm black, but I'm white, but I'm this, but I'm that. When we start to plant those seeds of loving ourselves enough to maybe start to see something different, the flowers that bloom actually create space for us to actually start translating the energy into words and changing the talk that we're having and then coming out of our vortex.
Yeah, absolutely. And and it's so much about intention, which I love that you mentioned it because that's step one. I, mm -hmm. I always talk with my clients about this idea that if you don't have a purpose, then you're not going to go anywhere. It's having mm -hmm. a, a roadmap with no directions on it. If mm -hmm. you don't know east, west, north, south, you're never going to end up anywhere, right? You're just mm -hmm. going to always be spinning. Mm -hmm. In this process, and, and what I'm really curious about now is in your own personal journey, what was it actually, what was the palatable and actionable things that you were doing that mm -hmm. started to elicit change in this place of, of shifting really in that place? I would call it in the latter stages of this journey after mm -hmm. this moment you've had of realization and intention, what were you actually doing? So I'm fortunate that I've actually been in personal development mindset since about the age of 16. I actually had a, a very solid runner into this. So I was already doing regular visualization, regular quiet time, a lot of reading and studying. I've read a book a week for many, many, many years, and it always continued to expand myself and learn and grow. But actually it was ultimately when the magic really happened was when I was diagnosed with Asperger's at 27 years old, because what had actually happened was, is that there was this massive part of my identity that I didn't know it for what it was. And so that was actually impacting how I related to myself. When that opened up, a big part of what actually facilitated me being able to make this transition into the, the part of my journey I'm in now is knowing what my strengths are, playing to those, loving myself in spite of my shortfalls and giving other people space to support me in them. So the biggest part really for me is owning that I'm, I have shortfalls and getting regular support from people to hold my hand through those whilst I systematically continue to develop my strengths, which for me is I can break down in, you know, complex things into simple processes. I love sharing that with other people. Like it lights me up and fills me up. I always make sure that I'm resourced within myself. So that's daily meditation, breath work, my Kundalini yoga practice, honing my mind, continuing to study, spending quiet time, knowing what fills me up and nourishes me, like spending time in nature. I moved away from the UK got myself a completely clean slate living here in Cabo in Mexico. You know, all of these things set up my environment for the win. And whilst my environment set up for the win, I take care of my mind. I take care of my spirit and I take care of my body to make sure that I'm resourced to keep doing what I love. And that's what's creating the momentum for me, for sure. Yeah. And, that, and that's a great point. Momentum being a part mm -hmm. of it. And, and so often, look, here's the thing, I, as you're like reading off these things that you do, I go, yes, yes, yes. I, I do all those. <laughs> It's a part of my daily routine. No yeah. questions asked. The first 45 minutes of my day are mine. I mm -hmm. read 35 books last year, 60 mm -hmm. the year before that. Good luck. I, I mean, you're like, it's like talking to a mirror here. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Dan, people are going to look at this and say, well, you guys are the anomaly. You guys are the special people. You mm -hmm. guys are the ones who somehow know something that I don't. Mm -hmm. And my argument to that is that, A, that's bullshit. I'm not special. Barely graduated high school on time. Unbelievable number of learning disabilities, like mm -hmm. can, can barely do one plus one. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and the thing that has gotten me to this place is, is momentum. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about two things. One, the power that self-care has played in your life. Mm -hmm. And then the juxtaposition of the power of momentum in that. First and foremost, momentum can't happen for shit unless there's a passion that kickstarts it. And I think first and foremost, anyone who starts competing the kind of paranoia stuff with our conversation, stop. Because I can guarantee you there's probably people that I compare myself to and there's probably people you've compared yourself to at some point. Everyone that you're looking up to and saying, I want to be you, they've got someone at some point in their journey that they wanted to be them too. Ultimately, none of that's going to work anyway because when we're trying to live our life and write our story against someone else's narrative, we're always going to hit a brick wall and that momentum is never going to happen. True momentum that works for you and through you must start with the passion that comes from you. So rather than them looking at our practices, get to know yourself. Get to know yourself. What lights you up? Meditation isn't for everyone. Some people, it's going to be a walk on the beach or a hike in the mountains. Some people, it's going to be playing the piano. For some people, it's going to be dancing naked under the stars. I don't know. But find your jam. Find your jam in what lights up you and nourishes your spirit, what nourishes your mind, and what cares for your body then you will have enough leverage over self to maintain those initial trudges of disruption that allow the momentum. Because unless you've got leverage over yourself enough to make those steps to build that momentum, you're not going to get anywhere. Does that make sense? 
hundred percent. And and that's so much what it's about. Mm-hmm. How do you leverage self care in this? Because I think there's there's so many people who look at this and they go, that's a lot of stuff to do. Mm-hmm. And in my journey, it was doing one thing at a time. And then Definitely. it built up to this practice and this uh-huh. habit. Talk to me about your life prior to self-care and mm-hmm. your life during like figuring it out. Mm-hmm. And then what self-care is for you now? I was going to actually migrate into the self-care because part and parcel of that is what do I have the capacity to hold? I think a lot of time why people end up breaking that momentum as it's trying to build up is they try to do more than they have the capacity to hold. I've got a concept that I teach called micro-shifting. Micro-shifting is essentially an, an evolution of the idea of baby steps because it's baby steps with intention and consistency. So I call it a consistent series of baby steps taken in the direction of a consciously chosen outcome. I have to know where I'm going. Self-care, great. What for? For me, I nourish myself so I'm able to show up and serve. Why? Because I freaking love serving. Also, if I'm just giving all of my energy to my people, there's none for myself, there's none for my son, there's none for my wife, there's none for my stepdaughter. So I need to make sure that I have the the energy mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and all of that to take care of my responsibilities as a husband, as a father, as a leader, and also as a human. So self-care has to have an intention. When self-care has got an intention, that intention should be matched with the knowledge of self not of Michael, not of Daniel, but of self as to what actually serves and nourishes you. And then you can have fun, keyword fun, learning which ones you love to do, which ones actually work. Make an adventure of it. At first, I went all out. You know, I went to the extreme. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I was waking up at 3.30 in the morning for about two or three years. Like I was getting up at 3.30 in the morning, doing an hour and a half to two hours of spiritual practice, Kundalini yoga, I was doing long off meditations. I was doing all this breakfast stuff. And, blah, 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 blah. and by the end, I was like, dude, who are you even doing this for? <laughs> who are you even doing this for? I, I did a, a retreat in Mount Chester and uh, we went to the I Am Center. I wanted to go and meet those guys. I mean, they seem really interesting. And they've actually got a rule that you're not allowed to meditate in the meditation room for more than 15 minutes. And they're like, dude, if you're meditating for more than 15 minutes, you, you're not even doing anything. You're just doing it for the ego like 15 minutes is all you need and then i remember um, esther hicks was saying that when she began channeling abraham she was doing 10 minutes of meditation a day now granted she was studying and she was preparing herself and getting into it but she was able to access infinite intelligence through 10 minutes a day of meditation so extremes have been a a part of my personality for a long time ultimately it's when i let go of those extremes and just tuned into myself saw what felt good and allowed myself to have fun experimenting with what actually worked. So now my practice now is very, very simple. I make sure every morning I take care of my spirit. I get in clear and intentional about my day and how that connects to my vision for my life. I take care of my mind and I take care of my body and I do what feels good from my laundry list. There's some things I definitely, meditation is always going to be in there. I love it and it feels good. Do I do deep breath work every day? No, but some form of conscious breathing is going to be a part of my morning. I'm always writing down what my intentions are. I'm always reading my vision for my life. I'm always doing some envisioning and and, and visualization for the day. Why? Because they work and they feel good. So I've got my minimum deliverables on days when I've got more time. Right now we've got a newborn. My son's going to be a month on Friday. So there's not as much sort of free time in the morning, but generally speaking. Congratulations. Thank you very much. If I've got more time in the morning, Maybe I'm going to do a longer meditation. Maybe I'm going to head down to the beach and do something there. Maybe I'm going to pop on the roof and do some extra special yoga. But ultimately, I've got minimum deliverables. Get clear on my vision for the day and how that connects to my vision for my life. Take care of that spirit, whether it's meditation, whether it's whatever that's going to be for you. Take care of your mind. And then take care of your body somehow. Get your body ready for the day. That's it. Whatever that is for you. And that doesn't have to be 20 hours. It can be a 30 minute, 40 minute thing. It can be a 20 minute thing if that's what you need, if that's all the time that you've got, but take care of those basics and it will set you up for the day. Yeah. And it's small victories, right? If you can Mm -hmm. do those little things every day, like you win. Like I I think about every single day, my routine doesn't differ, right? There, there's a point in which I measure it and I go, is it still being effective? And as long as it is, then I continue to do it because I can assure you there are things that I was doing four or five, seven years ago that I don't do anymore. They bring Mm -hmm. no value to my life, but Mm -hmm. I'm aware with that, right? 
I love what you said about this idea of just writing your intentions. I have mm -hmm. four different notebooks on my desk, a whiteboard over here, a thing over here, notepads. I believe in the power of writing, especially in goals and intentions, because mm -hmm. it gives us a path. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about the role that that's played in your life and where mm -hmm. you've seen success and failure in writing. Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? We'll be right back to today's episode, but I want to take a moment and invite you to Think Unbroken Conference. That's right. Our next conference is happening right around the corner this December with amazing speakers from around the world who are leaders in personal development, trauma education, mindset, and more. All you have to do to register to watch for free, that's right, $0, come and join us, is go to myunbrokenlife.com, register and sign up. You can get access to the free event. Watch it live with us this December. It'll be myself speaking along with amazing human beings like Anthony Trucks, Jamie Bronstein, Leslie Logan, and a special interview that I'm doing with Dr. Gabor Mate that has never before been released. So come and join us, myunbrokenlife.com. All you have to do is put in your email. We'll send you over the registration. You'll be able to come and join us, watch live. And then if you want access to the recordings or more information there for you to keep them forever. But in the meantime, go sign up up, block it off on your calendar. This is going to be a transformational experience that you do not want to miss. Head over to myunbrokenlife.com to register for free. Until next time, be unbroken. Do you know what's really interesting? I, 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 I can't remember the name of the scientist that, that came up with this thing, but there was actually a correlation between writing something down and tracking it and success. And I believe it's the amount of awareness that it brings to us because we're actually making the non-physical physical by translating it into the physical realm, by making it, making it, uh, having it written down. It's all very well a good hang of vision in my mind, but unless I'm doing something to translate it from the non-physical to the physical, I'm reducing the probability of that showing up. Writing something down is one of the easiest ways to start connecting the non-physical with the physical. Also, when you're using pen and paper, you're actually re-imprinting the neural pathways around the creation and manifestation of that. With the neural pathways in place, then actually the chemistry in the body that associates with the experience kicks in and it just makes it more probable. You're stacking the cards in your favor just by doing the simple thing of getting into the heart, really connecting with what you're writing down and writing it down. Yeah, and, and there's, there's power in that because yeah. so much of that, and, and this is my experience, is like looking at goals. Mm -hmm. In 2020, I will call it my most successful year of my life. No mm -hmm. questions asked. And many people shudder at that and they go, well, the world's collapsing. There's protests and Black Lives Matter and COVID mm -hmm. and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. I looked at the year and I said, okay, how do I work through the chaos of this mm -hmm. and still live my life? Mm -hmm. Because so much of what we do is about our mindset. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm asking this, and, or I'm going to ask this question to you is, what role does mindset play in your life right now? First of all, most, I'm with you on last year, I had an amazing year. I don't like to say it too much in front of a lot of people because a lot of people are still caught up in the stuff, right? And this is no judgment. I'm not a scientist, so I can't say if COVID's real or not. And if you're not a scientist, stop putting on social media about whether it's real or not. You're just, you're not helping. I'm not a politician or a political theorist. So therefore, I don't really get into that bit either. I think it's a politician's job for them to make their own argument, not people to beat each other over the head on social media. All of that stuff is just noise, which I think distracts us from us actually being present enough to make the choices that are going to navigate to us having the life that we want. True mastery doesn't take a, doesn't take a year off because there's stuff going on. True mastery is actually being able to step up and experience the life that you want, regardless of circumstances. The mental resilience that's required for us to actually navigate that comes from our mindset. Ultimately, our mind is the filter of what we're able to experience in our life. Nothing can show up for us physically, regardless of what we imagine, think of, believe, pray or meditate for, unless our mind allows it to be so. There's actually a part of the brain that shuts us off from witnessing it. The reticular activating system will literally shut your shit down if it's outside of your realm of belief. So unless I'm spending time cultivating a mind that's open to receiving a true and living experience of what I want to create, it's not going to happen. Mindset is the gateway to experience beliefs, which part of that mindset are the gateway to experience. Unless you're taking care of that, it doesn't matter what you're meditating about, what you're praying for, it's not going to show up because even if it does, you're not going to be able to physically see it.
Yeah. And I say every single day, it's the background on my phone, on my computer. It's every, it might become another tattoo on my body. That mindset <laughs> is everything. Mm -hmm. Mindset is everything. I don't, I don't think of another way that you can exist in the world without having this thing in your head that mm -hmm. you are a part of every day, whether you like it or not, be mm -hmm. in your control. Mm -hmm. So my question for you, Dan, is how do you make mindset be to your advantage while understanding like, man, I'm dealing with depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. suicidal ideations, maybe suicide mm -hmm. attempts, failed mm -hmm. business, hard relationships, mm -hmm. life is shitting on me. I can't seem to get my leg up. Everything's mm -hmm. against me. How do I, Dan, guy, I'm listening. You you sound like you make sense. How do I leverage this idea of mindset? One day at a freaking time, remembering that you're human and the likelihood that you're going to get it all done in one day is, is really low. Remembering that even if you're 15 years old, you spent 15 years developing the mindset that you have today. We're grownups. We've spent a lot more than 15 years developing the mindset that we have today. It might take more than a week to get beyond the suicidal ideations. It might take more than one meditation that you've been doing for 30 days or 40 days to get through the depression, but chip away at it a day at a time. Make those baby steps towards a consciously chosen outcome and allow your environment to support you. And I think this is a really key thing. The mind doesn't have an opinion. It just operates on the program that it's got. The program that's in your mind didn't come there from nowhere. It came as a result of inputs that were accepted and supported over time. So as you continue to make those baby steps in the direction of what you want, start supporting your mind in, not, in having inputs and an environment that actually speaks to what you want. So if you're saying that you don't want to have anxiety, you don't want to have lack, you don't want to have lack mentality, what's your environment saying? Is your environment agreeing with that? What are the conversations you're having? What are you watching? What are you reading? What are you listening to? Are all of those opportunities to place inputs in your mind pushing you in the direction of what you want? Because if not, you're not supporting yourself. And again, I'm not saying change it all overnight. I'm saying every day, ask yourself, what's one small step that I can make change in my, one small change I can make in my environment today that's going to support me in my new desire for how I want to think and what my thought quality is to be. Maybe it's going to be not watching the news. Maybe it's going to be reading something uplifting. Maybe it's going to be uh, changing my Instagram feed so it's things that are supporting me and uplifting me. Maybe it's I'm going to listen to the, um, the Michael Unbroken podcast and get some inspiration. Maybe I'm going to go ahead and read a positive piece of, of writing, a positive poem that's going to lift me up. Everybody's different and we're all going to have our own thing that's going to get our beans juiced up. Find those things and start to introduce them systematically into your life on a consistent basis and celebrate the small wins that come as a result and change must come. And I hear the word patience. You, that is the word that just resonates with me so Definitely. intensely here because your journey from this place of rock bottom to where you are now, it was years, yes. years and years and years. And then in the moment, recognizing that it was something you could tap into, making a choice and decision to recognize and tap into it. Mm -hmm. Thus, that shift in your mindset saying, I'm going to allow myself the space to believe. Mm -hmm. Now, great, Dan, this is all fine and dandy, but I sabotage everything in my life. Mm -hmm. Every time I turn around, I get in my own way. Every mm -hmm. time I wake up in the morning, I don't get out of bed. I don't drink the water. I drink mm -hmm. 19 cups of coffee because I was up drinking all night. I'm mm -hmm. still smoking. I'm overweight. I still don't get it. Mm -hmm. I still don't get it. I'm always in my own way. Dan, how do I get out of my own way, man? Point one is recognizing you're not sabotaging anything. The mind does not lose. I'm going to say that again. The mind doesn't lose. The unconscious mind is a perfectly, a perfect executing machine. It's a freaking terminator. There's nothing the unconscious mind sets out to do that it doesn't achieve. Everything that you're experiencing when you're not consciously choosing it is a result of the unconscious desire to move into that thing. You're out of shape because that's what's in your unconscious pattern. You're still drinking 19 cups of coffee because that's what your unconscious mind wanted. You're not drinking the water because your mind has not been seeded with a program that it's water over coffee. But it's not going to be an overnight process to change those things. It's going to be a systematic thing of engaging with your mind in a language that it understands, celebrating and chipping away at a day at a time, and introducing a new momentum that's going to dissolve those old patterns and create new ones. But patience is going to be a part of it. Self-love is going to be a part of it. Consistency is going to be a part of it. Compassion for yourself when you 
inevitably revolt back to, revert back to default is going to be a part of it. Seeking adequate support is going to be a part of it. Keeping your environment aligned with what you want is going to be a part of it. And staying on top of all of these design changes as often as you can, whilst you're consciously aware of what you're saying, doing, thinking, and feeling is going to be a part of it. And if you don't want it enough to put that work in, quit bitching and complaining, accept who you are and live that life. But if you do want to do it, you do want to go for it, you do want to dig in and you do, one day at a time, change must come. You cannot do things different and things remain the same, just as we can't do things the same and expect them to be different. But if we do things different and sharper day at a time consistently, even if it's the tiniest shift, the compound effect of that will bring you to the bring you to the win. I got, I got goosebumps, man. It's like you're in my brain right now, (laughs) you know, because I, I, I believe in this so truly that it is, it's all of these things. It's not just one or two things. And, and I was going to ask you a question, but you, you, you touched on it. I think about this place where we fall back, Mm -hmm. where we go back to old behavior, where we, Mm -hmm. where we fall off the train. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. We're human Mm -hmm. beings, man. Yeah. Like I, even now, today, all the time, I always have to do the work. It mm-hmm. never turns off. It's always mm-hmm. this life mission of mine to stay the course, no mm-hmm. matter what. But so often what happens is people, they get on the pathway, they're on the course, they've made it a week, 13 days, maybe a month, something happens, there's an interruption. And after that interruption, suddenly they find themselves back to where they came from. And, mm-hmm. and to me, I never think that you've fallen back to the point that you have to start from scratch. You just have to pick yourself up and you're a pace behind. Mm-hmm. How do you handle these moments in which you fall off and you go, man, I really just let myself down, mm-hmm. even though I've been doing so good for so long? Accept it. Accept yourself and love yourself to keep going. Because what's happening in those moments is you're being offered the opportunity to see it as a complete backslide versus a human episode. Accept it as a human episode. Love yourself, dust yourself off. At the end of the day, let's remember, none of us are getting out of this thing called life alive. So don't take yourself freaking seriously. None of us are getting out alive, right? If we're taking all our time, taking it so seriously that we're, oh my God, I fell off. I drank coffee. Okay. You drank a cup of coffee. Cool. Oh, I, I, you know, I did this. Okay, cool. Are you doing it now? No. Are you aware that you did it? Yes. So it's time to get back to it. Oh, I had, I had 300 days. Okay. You're at day one. Cool. You did 300 days. We can do 301 this time. At least let's go. Let's do it. Let's love ourselves enough to not allow these human episodes to knock us off and fall back into the program because it's completely unnecessary. And none of us are perfect, man. And I think, unfortunately, we live in this time where there is this measure of the possibility of who you can be versus Mm -hmm. all of these people who might be ahead of you. Mm -hmm. And guess what? That's fine. I totally Mm -hmm. recognize that there's always going to be people ahead of me, but Mm -hmm. I don't measure them versus myself. Mm -hmm. I go, okay, what do I need to do for me today? Mm -hmm. Comparison is the thief of everything, right? We talk about it just in the very much same scope as shame. Mm -hmm. Like you have to remove yourself from this idea that the only way you're going to be com- successful in life as a predetermined by you only variable is that you have to remove comparison because I don't live for you. I don't breathe for you. I don't think for you. I don't show up for you. I'm never going to be you as a father, mother, sister, brother, whatever that thing is. So leverage the idea and the understanding that like, it's okay if you fuck up. Mm-hmm. No one cares, Dan. <laughs> yeah. Lord, I fudged up. Dude, nobody's thinking about you. It's exactly the same thing. All that we're doing is robbing ourselves of the joy of the experience of the contrast even. You know, there's a, there's a school of thought that says those fallbacks are actually the soul calling for the experience of the contrast in the face of the momentum in one direction. Now, I don't know if that's the case. I haven't necessarily had a conversation with God to see if that's the way that it is. But there's something to that. At the end of the day, we're here to have a human experience and to live life. Part and parcel of that is witnessing the polarity and contrast that happens from having it one way this way, one day this, one day that. We're never going to be happy every day. We're never going to be sad every day. We're going to be some measure of either one. And all of those people that we're comparing ourselves to, yeah, fair enough. They might be having a happier relationship than you, but you don't know what's going on with their finances. You don't know what's going on with their health. 
Yeah, they might be making a crap load of money, but you don't know what's going on with their finances either. You don't know all of it. And at this level of consciousness, you're not going to know everything that's going on with someone else. Because even if you can see on the outside, you don't know what's going on in their soul, in their spirit or their heart. So let go of the obsession with that and pull that energy back and use it to consciously create a life that works for you. And, and I would parlay that to say, if you are in a life where people around you are constantly measuring themselves against you or mm -hmm. bringing you down because you're not on their level, mm -hmm. you need to think about the people who you're spending your time with because if anyone bringing you down is taking from you, mm -hmm. right? Anyone who isn't here to support you, to bring you up, to say you got this, mm -hmm. or even to say, hey, man, you are screwing up really bad right now. <laughs> You need to evaluate. Can I get a witness? <laughs> I'm saying, man, you need to evaluate the people in your life. Mm. One of the things that I think is really important because I do take measurement very seriously in my life, but my measurement is myself versus myself in its entirety. Beautiful. How do you how do you understand this place of whether or not you're truly showing up for yourself? Because I decide. <laughs> I write the measuring stick. I'm the author of the script. I'm the director, I'm the producer, I'm the guest star, I'm the gaffer, I'm, I'm all of it. I follow hologram theory. So for me, everything in my reality is a reflection of what's going on with, within me. This conversation with you, you're a reflection of myself, coming back to myself to tell me something more about myself. So I know that I'm always, like nature's always growing. The second that we stop growing in nature, we die. When the telomeres stop growing in our DNA, that's when we die. So I never feel that I'm going to reach the fullness of my potential. But what I can do is keep chipping away every day. So in terms of like me growing, in terms of me, like what I'm doing, I just ask myself, am I a step further along than yesterday? And not even across the board, spiritually, mentally, physically, am I a step further than I was yesterday? Then I've expanded. Yeah. It's like, it. it's like, we just became best friends, Dan. <laughs> like you would go in the garage, play some karate. Like, <laughs> I, I, I think about, I think about the measurement long-term, right? My mm -hmm. goal, I love what you just said. My goal long-term 30 years from now is likely unbelievably unattainable. Mm -hmm. Probably will not happen. And that's but thing. <laughs> I move towards it every day because exactly. the very infinitesimally small possibility that I could achieve it is mm -hmm so grandiose to me that mm -hmm. I'm willing to sacrifice everything on the road there. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I think that sometimes, and I would love your opinion on it, that you have to make goals that are so obtuse that the mm -hmm. people around you go, what the hell are you smoking? Yeah. What, is your, what is your thought on just going big? This is my thing. I think go as big. So I've got a phrase, push your edge and not your buttons. This is one of my Danisons, push your edge and not your buttons. So. Go so big that it makes you uncomfortable, but not so big that it frightens you into not taking any action. That's what it is for me. So people around me, are they going to get it? My wife looks at me sometimes like, Daniel, what's going on with you? <laughs> what are you doing? Like, all right, baby, this is what I'm going for. This is what I'm doing. All right, cool, whatever. And the, the fact is, is that I know that people around me aren't going to always understand it. They're not me. I don't give a fudge. Okay, you don't get it. That's cool. I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it because I want to keep pushing myself. Is everybody going to be able to operate at that level? Maybe not. Is there anything wrong to the people who, with the people who don't operate at that level? No, because they've got their own journey too. For me, I'm like you. Let's go for it. But I think it's beautiful that we don't all have to operate at that level. For some people, it might just be getting that step ahead. It might just be, you know, some people are happy with, they want to do their 40 years or whatever, their 30 years and go and have a fishing boat. And, and if that's what lights you up, cool. But ask yourself, is it really what lights me up? Or am I allowing fear, doubt, disbelief, a lack of vision hold me back from having as big a goal as I could do? I'm all in. If you're not, just ask yourself, is that me speaking or is it my high school teacher? my mum and my dad, my uncle Herbert, who said, I'm never going to amount to anything. Have a genuine and authentic conversation with yourself, a depth of understanding of yourself to know, is this me? And if so, be at peace with it. And if it's not, drop it. But ultimately, go to your edge and beyond to the point of discomfort, but not to the point of like, oh my God, I can't do anything because it's so big. 
that's what I say to people. And that's how I live my life too. Yeah, I love it. And I hear the word ownership in that. So much of it is if like, if you're going to believe it, if you're going to think it, if you want it to be a part of your life, go for it. Mm -hmm. The worst case scenario is you're going to fail. And the best measurement we have for information is failure. Because that exactly. means you can do it again. <laughs> that means that you can step into it from a different angle, a different exactly. approach. And, and I would collection. argue that one of the best things you can do in this journey is fail every single day. Daniel, I could talk to you all day, my friend. But before <laughs> I ask you my, my last question here, tell everybody where they can find you. Everything is dreamwithdan.com. Um, social media is on there, books, podcasts, free resources, which has got some cool bits on there, including some like visualizations and stuff. But head to dreamwithdan.com. Everything's there. Everything about me, what I'm doing in the world and, and how we can connect. I love it. Dan, what does it mean to you to be unbroken? For me to be unbroken isn't that I'm not broken, is that I don't remain broken. That regardless of how many pieces break off, I can always come back together have another run at this thing called life and have a riot doing so. Man, I love it. Powerful. And you've been on a ride. I can't wait to see where this ride goes, my <laughs> brother. What an enthralling conversation. Unbroken Thank Nation, you. please go and check out Dan. This is just the tip of the iceberg of what this man does. Please also check out the podcast, like it, subscribe, follow, rate, review, share with a friend. And until next time, my friends, be unbroken. Hey, Unbroken Nation, we'll be right back to the show. But I wanted to let you know that you can grab a copy of my first book, Think Unbroken, Understanding and Overcoming Childhood Trauma for free. If you go to book.thinkunbroken.com, you can download the PDF ebook version of the book and get everything that I know about the baseline of healing trauma for free downloaded to your email right now. Just go to book.thinkunbroken.com to download your copy of Think Unbroken, Understanding and Overcoming Childhood Trauma for a PDF for your phone. Again, that is book.thinkunbroken.com. Thank you so much for listening to Think Unbroken. Please share this episode with someone who could use it and help us move forward in our mission of ending generational trauma in our lifetime. And if you would, please take five seconds to pop on iTunes or Spotify, hit that five star, leave a review. And you can also reach out to us on social at Michael Unbroken or at Think Unbroken. And of course, you can check out our YouTube channel at Think Unbroken. Thank you for being a part of Unbroken Nation, my friends. And until next time, be unbroken. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show. But I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program.